Okay, so today we're going to finish up section four of the prerequisite chapter. And now the instructions are going to say factoring completely or factor completely. So when you see those instructions, what we're going to need to do is combine all the types of factoring. You may need to factor more than once, maybe not twice, maybe three times, maybe four times. It's all going to depend on the given problem. So always look for a greatest common factor first. After you factor out the GCF, you may be left with only two terms. And maybe those two terms may be the difference of two squares. Or maybe those two terms are going to be perfect cubes. So it may be the sum and difference of two cubes. Or maybe after you pull a GCF out, or maybe starting out at the beginning, it'll be four terms and you'll need to factor by grouping. Or let's say after you pull a GCF, you're left with three terms, or maybe starting right from the beginning, it'll just be three terms. And those three terms could either form a perfect square trinomial, or we could do the traditional factoring like we learned yesterday. So for the first example, again, instructions are gonna say factor completely, and these will be the same instructions on the quiz and on the test. So when it says factor completely, always, 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 look for a greatest common factor first. And I know that the greatest common factor between 12x squared and 48 is going to be 12 at, or just 12. So I'm gonna divide both of my terms by 12. I like to show the GCF underneath, so it gives me a visual of what I'm dividing. So now when I divide 12x squared by 12, I'm left with x squared. And then when I divide 48 by 12, I'm left with negative four or negative 48 divided by 12. Notice now what remains in my parentheses after my division is the difference of two squares. So I need to keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and square root the x squared. I'm gonna square root the four. And then don't forget about this GCF. It needs to keep coming down into your answer. If you forget it on the quiz, you will lose points. So now the square root of x squared is x, and I put both of those right there at the beginning of each binomial. One is going to get a plus sign, one is gonna get a minus sign when I factor the difference of two squares, and then the square root of four is two. So put a positive two there and a negative two there, and I'm finished. Also remember that after you factor something, you can multiply back your answer. If it doesn't go back to the original, you've done something wrong. Remember, multiplication is commutative. So technically, it doesn't matter the order that I multiply this back. If you want to foil the binomials first, then distribute the 12, you can do that. Let's try the next example. Again, always, always, always look for a greatest common factor first. So my GCF here between x to the third and 16x is just going to be an x because they both have an x in common. I'm going to divide it, and I'm left with x squared minus 16. Again, the difference of two squares. So I'm going to square root the x squared. I'm going to square root the 16. Don't forget about that GCF. It needs to come down in front of the answer. And then again, create your two binomials and then fill it in. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is four. One gets a plus sign, one gets a minus. Remember the order that you write, the plus and the minus sign doesn't matter. Let's say we have x to the fourth minus 8x. Actually, let's make it 27. All right, so what I'm going to do here is this is just an added example, 
my GCF here is gonna be X. So I'm gonna divide each of them by X. And then what remains is X to the third minus 27. Notice on this one, instead of number two was the difference of two squares. This is the difference of two cubes. And remember, we're gonna use our SOAP acronym where the S is the same sign, the O is opposite, and the AP is always positive. So remember, when you factor a cube, we need to cube root this term. So the X to the third gets cube rooted. And then you're gonna cube root the 27. Get another color here, a green. So then now, write your GCF. The cube root of x to the third is just x. The cube root of 27, actually let me use a different color here. Is x and then the cube root of 27 is three. And then remember in the next trinomial, this is where you're gonna put x squared. So you square this. Then the next term is opposite, so it'll be a plus sign. And then you're gonna multiply the x in the three. So you'll put three x, and then you're gonna square the three, and you're done. So remember, same sign, opposite, always positive. So remember the soap pattern for the test. The reason why I wanted to add this in there is none of the examples in the notes today um, factor a cube, and I wanted to review that with you. All right, let's go to example three. Now, for example three, just like in last night's homework, WebAssign is gonna expect you to keep your x squared term positive, so I need to factor out a greatest common factor of negative one. So I'm gonna divide everything by negative one essentially switching all the signs to opposites. And now I have a trinomial that I need to continue to factor. Now, if you recognize that the two, the first and the last term here, these are perfect squares. So this is potentially a perfect square trinomial. So let's try to square root these first and last terms and then double those square roots to see if it gives you the middle. So if I square root the 9x squared, I get 3x. If I square root the 1, I get 1. But then if I double that, I get 6x, which is my middle term. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So then all you need to do is set up your binomial with the square root of the 9x squared, which is the 3x, and then the square root of the 1, which is going to be 1, and then they both have the sign of the middle with the negative 1 in front. And again, WebAssign let you just put it in as a negative sign, and you could also have put it in as 3x minus 1 squared. WebAssign accepted either way. So you could either write two binomials and enter it, or you could have entered it in as a binomial squared. Remember, whenever you factor a perfect square trinomial, it's always going to give you a binomial that's squared, or the same binomial. Now, we could have also done the traditional factoring method here. We could have multiplied the 9x squared in the 1 and then found the factors in 9 that gave you negative 6. And then you would have found it would have been negative 3, negative 3, and then you would have had to factor by grouping. That method will work as well. All right, so for this one, notice also another key thing to remember is your polynomial always needs to be in standard form. So let me rearrange this first before I pull out a GCF. So I'm gonna write the largest exponent first, which is the negative three X to the third, then the nine X squared, 
and then lastly, the 12x. Now, I'm gonna look for the greatest common factor. And my GCF here is gonna be negative 3x because you want to keep your x squared term positive. And then after I divide, I'm now left with x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now at first glance, you may think, oh, this might be a perfect square trinomial. However, when you find the factors of 4 or the square root of 4 and the square root of x squared, and you double it, it won't give you the middle. So we have to do the traditional factoring here for the trinomial like you did last night, where we need to find the two numbers that multiply to give me negative four, but who will add to give me negative three. And those two factors are gonna be negative four and positive one. So I'm gonna go ahead and don't forget about your GCF. And then now create the two binomials and it'll be X minus four and X plus one. And again, the order of the binomials doesn't matter. You could have put the X plus one first um, and then the X minus four second. The next one, now this one's a little different, but it's still the difference of two perfect squares. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and square root this term and square root this term. So I'm gonna set up my two binomials to get ready for those square roots. Remember, when you square root a square, it cancels it. So whatever was underneath there just comes out. So I have x squared plus eight for both of them. Remember when it's the difference of two squares, one is gonna get a plus sign, one gets a minus sign. And again, it doesn't matter the order that you put the plus minus. And then now we have to square root the 36 x squared, which gives me six x. Now notice what's remaining is a trinomial. However, it's not in standard form, so let me fix it and put it in standard form, both of them, to see if I could keep going. So I'm gonna rearrange it. I'm just gonna switch the spot of the eight and the six X, and then the same thing here. And after it's rearranged into standard form, we can see that these are two trinomials that we can continue factoring. We need to look for factors of eight that will give me six. Or here, factors of eight that give me negative six. The factors of eight are one times eight and two times four. So the factors that will give me a positive six are gonna be positive two and positive four. The factors of positive eight that will give me a negative six, that are gonna be negative two and negative four and now you're done. Cannot factor any further. So for the next one, always, always, always look for a greatest common factor. Notice on this one, there is nothing in common. The nine doesn't have an X and there aren't any numbers in common. The GCF would just be a one. So I'm gonna notice that it's a four term polynomial. So this should be a clue that I'm factoring by grouping. So I'll make a group of the first two and then the second two. And now I'm gonna look for my greatest common factor of my first group, and that's gonna be x squared. I'm gonna divide it. I'm gonna look for my greatest common factor of negative 27x and negative nine. Now again, remember, after you divide by the GCF, what remains in the parentheses must match. So instead of pulling out a positive nine, I'm gonna pull out a negative nine, so my two parentheses match. So now I'll put again my two GCFs together and then take the binomial that's in common, the answer you got when you divided becomes the other binomial. 
Notice the first binomial I wrote is the difference of two squares. You got to keep going. So you're going to square root, square root. So it creates the two binomials. The square root of x is x. The square root of 9 is 3. One gets a plus sign. One gets a minus. And then don't forget about this one that you couldn't do anything else with. And again, the order here does not matter. If you would have written the 3x plus 1 first, that works as well. Remember, your GCF can be a binomial. So what is in common to both is the GCF of 2x minus 1. Now, if it's better for you to think of this top as being 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, that's what a binomial squared is. So then when you go to divide, you put the GCF on the outside, and then the answer for this first one's division, that cancels. So now you're left with 4x. And then over here, this one, one of these cancels, and you're left with just a 2x minus 1. Now, I can combine my like terms in this parenthesis, and 4x plus 2x is 6x minus 1, and then the GCF. And you're done. So I'm going to add a slide. So let's say we have x to the fifth minus 8x squared minus 9x to the third plus 72. So the first thing I'm going to do is look to see, is there a greatest common factor? No, there's not. However, what I could do is factor by grouping. So I'm going to make a purple group and a red group. My greatest common factor of purple is going to be x squared. I'm going to divide. I get x to the third minus 8. My GCF of the red group is going to be negative 9. Because if I pull out a positive 9, I won't get a match. So then x to the third minus 8. So again, notice these two binomials are the same. So write it down once. And then take the two GCFs you divided by, and they become the other binomial. Notice. All right, so then now... Notice I've got the difference of two cubes and the sum of two squares. I mean, sorry, the difference of two squares and the difference of two cubes. So I need to factor both of these. So the purple one, remember, we're going to be doing SOAP. So remember, this is a cube, so acronym SOAP. So I cube root the x to the third. I cube root the 8 with the same sign. That's the S. Then I'm going to square the x, multiply the 2 and the x with the opposite sign, and then square the 2. The trinomial, after you factor a cube, cannot be factored any further. There are no factors of 4 that will make a 2 for the middle. So I'm done with the cube. Now I need to factor the difference of two squares. x plus 3, x minus 3. And you're done. The order here does not matter. Um, you could have factored it any way you wanted. If you had written the x squared minus 9 first, um, then the x plus 3x minus 3 would have been written first. 